Hello, and welcome to our 2020 I Farm My Vote video series. Today, I'm joined by Sanford Bishop, Democratic candidate for Georgia's second congressional district. Welcome, Representative Bishop. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, we're happy to have you here. Um, before we get started, I want to remind our audience that the I Farm My Vote uh, initiative and Georgia Farm Bureau are nonpartisan. That being said, um, we do not endorse candidates. We don't tell our members how to vote. Um, we just want to encourage people to vote and to participate in the electoral process. Um, we hope that this video series serves as a resource along with our other I Farm I Vote materials on our website to help our members make a informed decision when they go to the ballot box in November. So that being said, uh, again, welcome. Thank you for being here today and uh, let's get started. Congressman, I want to start um, by getting to know you a little bit better. Could you tell us about your education, your background, kind of what got you started? Uh, yes, I, uh, I grew up in Mobile, Alabama, went to college and law school in Atlanta. I uh, went to uh, Emory University, Morehouse College. And of course, uh, I uh, started to practice law uh, in Columbus, Georgia. I uh, practiced law there, uh, and of course, after about four years, I ran for the legislature in 1976. Uh, I was elected to the Georgia State House, where I served for 14 years, and uh, followed that by a two-year uh, term in the state Senate. Uh, in 1992, I ran for Congress. I was elected to Congress, uh, and I've been serving uh, as the representative of the second congressional district of Georgia uh, since 1993. Uh, I serve on the agriculture, I served on the agriculture committee, uh, the post office and civil service committee, uh, as well as the veterans affairs committee. Uh, after a, a number of years on that committee, I got a, a seat on the house permanent select committee on intelligence, uh, where I served for six years. Uh, then I was uh, able to get a seat on the uh, appropriations committee, which uh, funds all of the uh, functions of the American government, uh, which allows us to, uh, to distribute the tax dollars that the people across this country uh, pay. And of course, uh, uh, when I got on the Appropriations Committee, I saw first the Agriculture Subcommittee of Appropriations. Uh, I also was able to serve on the Homeland Security Subcommittee of Appropriations for a while, uh, the Defense Subcommittee of Appropriations for a while, uh, the uh, Military Construction Veterans Affairs Subcommittee of Appropriations, uh, where I'm the, now the vice chair, and of course the um, uh, Financial Services Subcommittee of Appropriations. Uh, I chair the, uh, I've been there now long enough, uh, thanks to the uh, Farm Bureau and all of the farmers and ranchers and agribusinesses across Georgia uh, who have supported me over the years and helped me to work for them. Uh, I've been able to secure the chairmanship of the Agriculture Subcommittee of Appropriations. And in that uh, position, I am responsible for the total funding of the, De Georgia, uh, the uh, uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, and all of its sub-agencies, uh, the um, uh, Federal uh, Drug Administration, which is responsible for uh, our food safety and our uh, prescription drug safety, uh, as well as uh, medical device safety. And of course, uh, uh, serving on the uh, uh, Agriculture Subcommittee, agriculture is the number one industry in the state of Georgia. Uh, defense is the number two industry in the state of Georgia. And of course, being vice chairman of the Military Construction Veterans Affairs Subcommittee helps me and puts me in a position uh, to be able to help our veterans and to help uh, secure our military bases and uh, our national defense. And of course, the third industry in our state is financial services. Uh, Georgia is Transaction Alley. And of course, uh, being able to sit on that subcommittee certainly enhances uh, our capacity to, uh, to keep our economy moving through the financial transactions, the billions and billions of dollars that are, are transitioning through Georgia every day. So uh, that is what I do, and I certainly enjoy it. It is a, a ministry to me of public service uh, yes, to work sir. and in behalf of the people who uh, send me to Washington to work for them. I work for the people of my district, from people of Georgia, and of course, uh, to enhance the quality of life for the people of the United States of America. 
Very good. Well, you're very well rounded. You've, you've had a lot of experience um, and we really appreciate, of course, your service to agriculture. So that being said, these next few questions should not be um, any, any stranger to you. Um, as an agricultural organization and as the state's largest ag organization in the state, Georgia Farm Bureau was founded back in 1937 to be a voice for the farmer in both DC and in Atlanta. So that being said, it's obvious that agriculture is the livelihood of many of our members. Um, let's start off with kind of a, an easy one. What are three of the biggest issues you see affecting Georgia agriculture today? Well, first off, uh, let me just say that in Washington, we have so very few members in Congress uh, who come from agricultural production states. Uh, many of our members have absolutely no idea of what it takes to get food uh, from the farm uh, to the table. Uh, they think that the food comes from the supermarket. And of course, uh, they don't have that understanding, which means that we have uh, fewer and fewer votes every time we have a census and every time we have a redistricting and we have an election, we have fewer and fewer members uh, who come from production agriculture districts. So that's a challenge uh, to have people in place uh, who can uh, continue to support agriculture. Uh, I think I have said uh, time and time again that in the United States of America, we produce the highest quality, the safest, the most abundant, uh, and the most economical food and fiber anywhere in the industrialized world. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, we have to have, and our farmers must have adequate uh, support, adequate programs that will create an environment and have the resources available for them to continue to do that. And of course, that is one of the things that uh, uh, I uh, view as, as my reason for being uh, in Congress. And that is to make sure that uh, those resources and, and those uh, 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 circumstances and that environment is uh, put in place and kept in place uh, for the benefit of our farmers whether it's regulatory reform that we need uh, so that uh, our farmers' hands are not tied by uh, agencies such as the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, I've had to fight over the years uh, through every administration, Democrat or Republican, to make sure that the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, did not impose uh, regulations that would strangle uh, the capacity of our farmers to provide the food and fiber that they uh, produce so well. And of course, uh, that is an ongoing struggle and we continue in that regard. Uh, of course, uh, the next thing that I think that is a challenge to agriculture is farm labor. Uh, farm labor is uh, at, uh, very, very, uh, is very difficult for our producers to have. Uh, and of course, without it uh, and with the uncertainty, uh, without having a, a very strong uh, uh, guest worker program, uh, to be able to make sure that our producers have the labor on the farm in order to produce uh, and harvest our crops, uh, that, that creates a great risk uh, for our producers. So we have got to get uh, a comprehensive uh, 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 legislation in place that will assure uh, our producers, uh, our farmers and our ranchers that they can have the, the necessary uh, 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 labor to uh, help them uh, do what they do so well. And of course, uh, the third thing that we've got to do is we've got to have connectivity. Uh, I believe very strongly that uh, our rural communities uh, in America uh, deserve the resources and the connectivity and all of the uh, opportunities that are available any place else in America, particularly in our cities. I think our rural families, our farm families need to have access to uh, broadband and the internet uh, because that will enhance education, it will enhance healthcare, and it certainly will enhance business. And we have too many com communities uh, in our rural parts of America, rural America, that are not uh, fully connected. And of course, that is a real challenge. So uh, making sure that uh, we have a regulatory framework in which farmers can work and function and produce and uh, match, make sure we have uh, a good trading opportunities because uh, we produce uh, more food than we're able to consume in this country. And our farmers, in order to uh, uh, be successful, have got to have additional markets. And so we've got to uh, be pro-trade and we've got to be able to have markets outside of this country where we can market the, the wonderful uh, products that we grow and that we produce here in America. Yes, sir. 
Um, what's a passion project that you may have had throughout your time in Congress where you, you could envision having that would make an impact on the state um, or rural Georgia or agriculture in the state in general? I think that uh, my passion project is the connectivity, the rural broadband uh, to get America connected. Uh, I am uh, convinced that uh, no child or no family uh, should be at a disadvantage simply because of the zip code that he or she uh, lives in. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, every child, particularly those in rural America, ought to have the same opportunity to realize that full potential as any child anywhere else in the country. And for that reason, we have got to secure uh, broadband and internet connections everywhere so that uh, our youngsters in rural America, all across rural America, uh, have uh, the opportunity to, to realize their full potential and be all that they want to be. And our families can be as prosperous and as healthy as uh, they can possibly be because they have resources, whether it's healthcare, whether it's educational resources, uh, to be able to accomplish that. Yes, sir. Well, you kind of covered my next question, which was I'm going to ask you what, what you would do to improve rural access to amenities such as healthcare and broadband, but kind of touched on that. So we'll, we'll keep going. Um, before I let you go, we're going to wrap up with a couple of fun questions for our audience. Um, first off, what is your favorite Georgia grown commodity? Georgia peanuts. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. All right, one more. Um, since you mentioned the peanut, um, we're fortunate to have an abundance of Georgia grown commodities in our state, but uh, one big question that people always ask, is it pecan or pecan? Well, I grew up in Alabama and my mother was from North Carolina, my father was from Mississippi, and they both, they taught me pecans. When I That's moved to Georgia, I ran into a lot of people who said pecan. So. Yes, I alternate between the two. Uh, well, I, I, pecans are just as good. I call it um, I call it a pecan myself. Yeah, yeah, but they're, I have, they're both very yummy. Yes, sir. I've heard of most people I've talked to have said pecan, so I'm happy to hear you say that you, you call it a pecan too. Um, thanks again for taking the time to visit with us today. The I Farm I Vote initiative goes beyond our state's active um, farmers and rural Georgia citizens and is in, in, impacts every single citizen across the state who is impacted by agriculture. So thank you for understanding the importance of Georgia agriculture. We know you have been a servant for Georgia agriculture in DC and we appreciate you spending some time discussing that with us today and wish you the best of luck on the remainder of your campaign. Thank you very much. Thank you very kindly. Thank you.